Welcome to another exciting episode of the Business of Digital podcast, featuring your hosts, Matt Siltala and Dave Rohr. Hey guys, excited to have you join us on another one of these Business of Digital podcasts. And today we have another special guest, and um, this is a good friend of mine that has been in the industry forever. Most of you may know him as the pest control guy. Why? Because he wears shirts that says the pest control guy. Thomas Valentine. Hey, dude, how you doing? I'm doing awesome. Thanks, Matt, for having me. Hey, thank you for joining us. I'm glad that we can make this work. This is something that Dave and I, and I know Dave, we don't want to forget Dave. Hi, Dave. And uh, he's muted, but we're just going to say hi. Here. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, so what we wanted to do, and, and we felt really uh, clever about this, uh, Thomas, but uh, before or, or here, I'll, I'll get into that first, but we felt really clever with this title. We're going to call this Bugging Out Over Reviews. <laughs> I like it. I like but, it. But before we jump into it and talk all things reviews with you, maybe just take a few uh, or like a minute or so and just kind of give us a background of uh, just so our listeners, if they're not familiar with who you are as the bug guy, just give us a little bit of your background. Okay. Um, I started with the pest control company uh, back in about 2006. And uh, at that time, they did not have a website at all. And my brother-in-law, uh, who owns, owns a company, um, was, well, I'm a pest control guy. I don't need a website. And so I, I was like, dude, 2006, you got to have a website. <laughs> um, he literally had, he had a domain. It was under construction, red brick and all, um, for like six years. Hadn't touched it. And so I spent two days throwing up a, a, a generic website for him back in 2006. Uh, after a year of that, I said, hey, by the way, you know, here's all the here's all the leads and sales you got from your website. Here's the traffic it was getting. And I hadn't even started SEO on it. I, I had done SEO for my own personal wedding photography business back in 2001, got ranked for Phoenix Wedding Photographer. Um, but at any rate, he was like, well, I want more of that. And so 2006, I built his first website. By 2007, I was on the first page for pest control uh, nationally. Uh, 2008 is, and is when, or 2009-ish, is when the local pack came out. And so jumped on that because that was much more uh, relevant to, to us as a pest control company. Um, I didn't need to rank for pest control on a national level because we, uh, at that time, we had, I think we were in 14 different markets. So... Ranking locally, though, was was awesome. And then on top of that, they started throwing reviews in 2009. So in 2009, I said, hey, team, we've got to get reviews. And uh, and so I started a program with my technicians or our technicians on how to ask for online reviews and how to provide that uh, the quality service that we needed to to get those uh, those online reviews. Fortunately, we had already been surveying our customers uh, for many years. Every year we send out a, a customer survey and they they rate us and tell us, you know, if they like the service or not. So we, we had a good idea that they would be receptive to giving us reviews prior to actually asking for reviews. Uh, but kind of that's it. I mean, my, my general rule of thumb for most people when they ask about online reviews and how to get good reviews, they say, first off, don't suck. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and second off, just figure out a system to ask. And then third, make that system um, easy for them to follow and actually give you that review. And that's well, this is a perfect segue into kind of like how I wanted to start this off with you with reviews. I'm just kind of, uh, you know, I, I'm, I'm thinking here about about like just how reviews, I guess, if you will, have the way that we go about reviews or the way that reviews are left, like just kind of the evolution and how it's. Uh, evolved since you said I think 2009 when they first started uh, you know uh, making a big deal out of them or at least putting them online um, so what would you say like over the years has has changed or, or how has it evolved and what have you had to do differently with like the way you go about it or or have you uh, is there anything that the people need to be aware of or just like uh, what are what are like the best practices I know that that's like a million questions in one but you kind of see where I'm going with it like where, where has, how has it evolved, I guess? Okay, that's, um, yeah, that is pretty open. Uh, l let's start with, uh, in fact, you know this uh, story as well, Matt. Uh, 
since we were the only pest control company asking for reviews in the beginning it was really easy to to do well with those reviews um you know when you've got 10 20 30 40 50 reviews and nobody else does then hey, people just they want to click on you they want to come to you and, and and buy service from you so in the beginning when there was no competition it was really easy unfortunately for us because we we were asking for reviews and we were getting reviews um we looked really suspicious to google uh i even got a call from the bbb one time i had a yelp person reach out to me and was like hey what's going on how come you're getting so many reviews um and so <laughs> all because you're just trying to do it right and 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 uh, do what they want have people leave reviews <laughs> right i thought it'd be a good situation i mean a lot of these people yeah. didn't even have google accounts and so we're encouraging them to go get a google account uh, but apparently they didn't, they didn't. Apparently you were a little aggressive. <laughs> yeah. And I had a conversation with, um, um, Matt cuts at the time. And, and I said, Matt, look, I've got 10,000 customers in, in the Phoenix area. How come when I got to, you know, Oh, you said, sorry, you cut out a little bit. You had a conversation with Matt cuts. That's what you're talking about. Yes. Sorry. Okay. Perfect. Um, had a conversation with Matt and I said, I, I've got 10,000 customers in the Phoenix area. Why can't I have 300 reviews? Cause they, they literally cleared the plate. They took all my reviews away at one time. Remember that. Yeah. <laughs> and he's like, well, he's like, I wouldn't, I wouldn't worry about it so much. Focus on something else. I'm like, no, that's, that's not the right answer. I mean, no. and so I just continued to do what I was doing. I, I said, you know what? they're going to figure it out they're going to to have to update their system and, and they have um to be able to determine you know hey these guys can actually get that many reviews so that's that's one of the things that did change um is the the quantity of reviews coming in and people and review platforms realizing that hey this is going to be a thing you know all we, i'm taking from this is you're the one person that matt cuts wasn't helpful to <laughs> uh, he was actually still pretty helpful. I, I'm I just kidding. <laughs> yeah, he's actually been helpful. He he got me uh, he got me in to talk to uh, the Google local maps team at one point, and uh, they're actually they're actually implementing some of the things that um, that I asked that they do. So it was it was pretty cool. He's a good guy. Anyway, he got me sidetracked talking about Matt. <laughs> good, that's a fine. Go ahead. Uh, what was the rest of that question? So how else has it changed? Um, I guess what are you are is there anything different in two, 2000 cuz that's about a 10 year gap is there anything differently that you're doing in 2019 that you were doing in 2009 or is it still basically just the same we're going after um you know we're trying to get uh, happy customers to write reviews and you know like is how's the approach changed how's it different uh, my strategy is actually the same i i have not I have not changed it since 2009. And there's I, nothing I used, like with uh, Google or Yelp or, or their rules or their laws that you're breaking or anything like that. And, and uh, you know, things like that that people need to be aware of. I'm just curious. Yeah. Um, well, I, okay, I guess I'll, I'll back step a little bit. There are a couple things I have changed along the way. Um, one is uh, with, um, with our own website, we actually started asking for reviews and storing our own reviews. I wanted to have my own unique reviews that I owned on my own website. Um, and with that, that also allowed me to, to make sure that my technicians uh, were being honest. Um, and we've had, I've had, unfortunately, you know, a couple technicians that, that, uh, that thought that they were doing something good for us by faking reviews that we fired because they were faking reviews. So that's, completely honest and open there um, and it happens yeah I mean you could see that happening yeah I mean it, and we grade them as well I, they, they cannot get certain positions and promotions if they um, if they don't have positive online reviews and they know that it's interesting uh, Yelp has always said don't ask for reviews um, Yelp uh, yeah and that's the kind of one that I was getting to without having to like jump in and say it because like I'm right. just always curious how you because you know you're asking 
and again, I've always thought that this was the stupidest thing ever from Yelp, to be honest. Like, I just, I, I have a, I used to have a love-hate relationship with Yelp, but I just have a hate relationship with them now. <laughs> but, um, so well, like, well, Matt, I think it's because for Yelp, I think it's because if they tell you to get reviews and to ask for them, it opens the floodgates to problems. Well, yeah, it's almost like, you know, telling your kid don't do something when you know they're going to do it and you, you actually want them to like, <laughs> we want you to go get reviews. We want you to go get lots of reviews, but we can't tell you to, because then you, you might abuse the system. It's. I, I think they're screwed either way. Yeah. Yeah. Google Google one time, though, said, yes, go ask for reviews. They've actually changed their guidelines on this several times. Really? They said, yes, go ask for reviews. Then they said, no, don't ask for reviews. And and currently, I don't think that there's anything in their platform about either asking or not asking. I think they just said, hey, just, just strike that line entirely and let people do what they're going to do. Do you know how many emails they send me about being a local guide and how hey did you like this place do you want to review it did you take any photos yeah like every well, week see, i get like two emails from them about places this this is the way that i look at it here's here's the difference okay that's google and, and you guys well yeah but you guys correct me if i'm wrong like with yelp for example let's say that someone's wanting to get their yelp reviews up okay i'm in a restaurant and someone come, you know the business owner comes up to me and is like hey you know, I want to give you 15% off or I want to give you a free dessert if you'll go and write me a Yelp review right now. There's a difference between that and when I'm leaving, if I see a sign that says, hey, if you had a good experience or not, whatever, just we're on Yelp, give us a review. They're not asking for anything specific. You know, there's difference between, you know, like I guess the one I'm being incentivized, but even you, you see what I'm saying? Like I don't, I don't see that there's anything wrong with making people aware that you're on a certain platform that that you know your business will thrive or do better with reviews. Yeah, that's I guess the difference for Yelp and Google, um, even in Dave's case, is that they're the ones asking, and so I don't know. I I, I think that you're right, Matt, on, on definitely on the fact that there's a difference between incentivizing somebody for a review and and getting an honest review because that that is one thing that i always tell people don't 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 go offering uh incentives or money um you know i was talking to somebody else the other day and they actually said it better than i did so i was like i don't know if i should quote it or not but it is pretty funny it said don't make your customer a whore <laughs> so that's funny <laughs> yeah you don't want to pay in my opinion it cheapens the relationship and when you bring money into something like that where when genuinely they want to do you a favor and they love you they're going to give you a better review um, and it doesn't cheapen the relationship it actually makes the relationship stronger uh, if you could get them to give you an honest review so yeah. so we shouldn't offer 10 percent off uh, off of the subscription to the business of digital podcast if you go and review us on itunes <laughs> i mean Probably it's not, free yeah. so off um, free. yeah 10 percent yeah. off free so um Feel and free that, to go leave a review, but and, yeah. And no, that doesn't mean you get 10% less of Dave or me. Sorry. <laughs> so what about, oh, I was going to, no, go ahead, Dave. What about what, what is your process um, for when you do get a bad review? Oh, that's good. That's a fun one. Um, Cause I know um, for those that may have seen you, most people, uh, probably a lot, some of our listeners may have, but um, you had an interesting, like you have dashboards and, um, if you ever want to go see a cool session, find Thomas when he's talking about reviews, because he has a ton of visual assets and a ton of different stuff that really digs into this, but I'll let you kind of answer my actual question. Okay. So it, it's actually somewhat inspired by, uh, Satis the book Satisfaction, Customer Satisfaction by J.D. Powers and how every good cu company listens to the voice of the com customer. He, in that book, outlines that a, a hotel experience where the customer has a good experience and leaves happy, rates a company at, at a lower level on average than a hotel experience where they had a problem and the hotel 
fix the problem to their satisfaction on average has a higher customer satisfaction score. That's super interesting. Yeah. It makes sense in a weird way. Yeah, if like you go you in expect, and get like, you expect to not have any problems. If that makes sense. Like when when you go to a restaurant, you expect the food to come out hot, you expect it to come out the right order. When someone comes to take care of the bugs, your job I'm paying you to come take care of it. You know, I expect not to have my hotel room you know, flood. So I, I think I could, that makes sense. Although it is interesting that they, they actually have proof of that. Yeah. So it's encouraging to me because then it says, Hey, you know what? They had a bad experience. So what make it better and ask them to, uh, to update their review, um, after the fact, um, you know, Hey, I saw that you had a negative online review and we, we want to take care of this problem. We want to fix it. And so we, we definitely go after every negative online review that we get. We contact the customer. Um, we open up a dialogue. We take care of the problem to the best of our ability. Look, um, people, customer service. Right. <laughs> and, and even even with their, uh, this is kind of one of my fun stories. I had a lady that was like, no, you guys screwed up so bad. You deserve that review. You know, um, I'm not taking it down no matter what you ever do. And I said, okay. Thanks for, thanks for the feedback. Um, sorry, I couldn't fix it for you. We sent her a refund check anyways, because that's our policy, right? So I sent her a refund check with a, a, a note in it and saying, sorry that we, we screwed up. Here's, here's your a refund for the last two months of your service. Um, if you ever want to give us a second chance, please contact me directly. I, I'd love to, the opportunity to, to, to make things right still. And she went on and she updated her review. Huh. And she said she never would. Right. And, uh, and that's one thing that like, even in the negative online review responses that I, that I do online, you need to, you need to have a strategy there. You don't want a canned response every single time. You definitely don't want to argue a with your customers. Response. Right. You definitely don't want to argue with your customers. You don't, yeah. you don't want to be the bully saying, Oh no, you're the one that's wrong. <laughs> you're stupid. It's your fault that we... That Even if they are wrong and they are stupid. <laughs> yeah. You kind of let that speak for itself sometimes. There's a couple bad reviews out there where I'm like, no, 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 don't fix that one. <laughs> yeah, we, yeah. we need a couple bad reviews. Um, actually, my team <laughs> doesn't listen to me. They, they still want to fix every single bad review, which is probably good for them. Um, but yeah, so definitely go after the negative online reviews as far as fixing the problem and, and reaching out to the customer. On the operational side, we've found things in our system that, that we could actually fix that would avoid these these problems in the future. Uh, and I think Dave was actually talking about that one a little bit and uh, the fact that we, one of our complaints is that we, in my session I talked about, that we, we weren't showing up. Yep. Well, we found a good segment of those people um, had locked, like had community gates that we couldn't get through. So... We identified that and, and found a system to to fix that and make it more prevalent in the technician's, you know, iPad that, hey, by the way, here's the gate code and uh, and help them to get into those communities. So I'm curious. Um, I think you talked about it in this session. How do you mine or dig into um, I, not every business is going to get as many reviews as you get. Um, so it might be they might not need like crazy infrastructure and tools and you know but what are you doing or how are you mining your yelp google facebook your own reviews and kind of bringing it together is there any um, one tool or is it just custom built internal we have we do use a chat meter um but it's not i don't, I don't really use it for a review um mining tool uh, it does help. Chat meter helps organize the reviews so that we can respond in a single dashboard. Uh, it's a fantastic tool. Uh, was the one, what, oh, sorry, go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> you first. Um, I was gonna say, what, what was the internal, like, how did you get to find or what tools did you use or process did you use to figure out that the reason why you weren't showing up was because in the reviews, there was either something that said, 
you didn't show up and then you looked back and you figured out it was gate? Was there like keywords that you mined through it or was it just um, you noticed the addresses and looked at the map type of thing? Yeah, so we, I actually love digging into our data over here. In fact, my, my go-to uh, mission statement for my team at this point is uh, organize and present data to inspire growth. And so we do a lot uh, internally um, and even as a marketing platform uh, for our people that are coming to learn about pest control, we, you got to organize the information in a way that inspires people to, to change and to, to grow. Um, but internally, yeah, we went through and, and I knew the, I knew the information intimately because I was the one that was responding to a lot of these negative online reviews last year. Um, so I was going through and I started saying, okay, look, I'm seeing a trend here. Here are, you know, five, six different categories I could put these reviews in to say, um, you know, these are our big issues. The, of the negative reviews, these are the ones that are hitting mo most often. And so um, with that, we built a tool that um, scrapes our, our reviews. We take all the reviews that we get, we put them into our own database, um, both positive and negative. That's such an our... amazing way to use that data. That's just fascinating. Yeah, it's kind of cool. And, and the other cool thing about it too is that I had to realize, and I have to accept it, that you know, from the operational side, you know, we're going to mess up a little bit. And so there's going to be a baseline trend that should be acceptable for certain things. Right. You know, we we don't always get rid of the bugs in the first first try. You know what I mean? So people are going to have we're going to have a baseline of you know five percent of our our. Well, and, 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 and sorry to interrupt, but I always look at it like this way too with, with that, Tom. It's like my wife, when I, I hear her talking to me all the time about this kind of stuff, when she's going and reading up on like a new automotive group that we're going to go to, she's like, oh, well, they have like 50 reviews and they're all five stars. I don't know if I trust that. I'm going to go like find someone that has like four and a half because it's like more trustworthy to me. And it's crazy how like that kind of thing works because there's not, I don't think that's been there's hardly any business out there where every customer has been 100% happy 100% of the time. You know what I'm, does that make sense what I'm saying? Oh, definitely. Yeah, the, it, across the board, optimally, uh, 4.7 is the is the best review rating you can have. And Interesting. And as you said, there's actually a, a turning point when the reviews look too good. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And there's, it's based, it, it changes by industry. Uh, in fact, I, I should probably shoot you over a study that I have on that. Uh, but like athletic shoes or light bulbs or hair products, um, you know, high end gifts. There's there's a turning point on all of those where hey, it's too good to be true. Well, high end gifts is actually always drop it on the write up too for all the listeners. Yeah, yeah, I can send that to you. It's put out by uh, Northwestern uh, uh, University. So, well, um, we're kind of getting close to the, this is fascinating, but, uh, there's a question that I kind of wanted you to get out there and, and before we run out of time, um, I, sorry, not, I'm not gonna catch you off real quick, but Dave, just, just on your other side, you said, you know, most businesses may not want to do it to my level. I think every business should look at their negative online reviews and start at least identifying, Hey, these are my major concerns and, and reading through those negative online reviews. Well, I don't know so. if they can. They just don't have that breadth of reviews. Like you have how many, you're in what, eight or 10 states now or something? And yeah, you have, we got 25 different markets. Yeah, we, 25 different wow. markets. You're serving, I mean, you had 10,000 customers just in Phoenix. So, I mean, think about a restaurant or even like, you know, a, a small, a, a, a company that services enterprise clients. Okay, there's only, <laughs> there's only 500. Maybe, you know, if you go to the, you know, 1,000, they, they possibly could only have a thousand. So to have that number of reviews and number of people, it's different, but they should be doing NPS type, you know, things or looking at those types of reviews or working with their account managers or salespeople or digging through your CRM to see what prospects didn't like or what they did like, why clients left, um, look through your customer service stuff, internal stuff. Um, I think a lot of people just go, oh, online reviews are good, but what about the internal stuff? Why are people leaving yeah. that they don't go online because they did, it's, 
it takes time to go and you know complain about someone unless you're really mad you're not you're just gonna leave <laughs> yeah yeah we've always theorized that for every one negative online review there's probably 10 to 20 if not more customers that experience the same thing that just never complained about it yeah interesting all right sorry go ahead matt let's, oh no let's problem just uh in wrapping it up maybe give us a minute or two on uh, on this final thought but you know if there's for those listeners of ours a lot of them are are new to this um and if they have like a a, a new business or they're a small mom and pop or just someone that is new to the review game if you will you know what's your bit of advice to them like how should you know what what's the one thing that you want them to to do or know or to start uh, working with reviews i would say start with just asking um you know what i mean like don't don't be afraid to, to reach out to your customers and ask and it's really the relationship that makes the difference that in getting the review a good review and the honest um, feedback uh, that you need as a business to to be able to to thrive in the this review culture um, as a you know as a guy that loves my phone and cell phone service as much as I do I don't own variety I don't owe Verizon a a a review at all but I do owe the guy at the counter that helped my wife figure out her new phone and he was super helpful do you know what I mean yeah. the guy at the Verizon store if he would have asked me for a review I would have dropped him a review in a heartbeat huh. interesting yeah that so, makes sense I would focus on the review I would say when your customer is smiling that's what we tell our technicians as well when they are smiling and you've, you're wrapping up your service um, that's the moment to ask and when you say is there anything else I can do and you see a smile from them in response they're I like they're that. in a moment that they're going to be receptive to give you an honest, positive online review. And that's that's the best time to ask. I like that. And I think I'll just end it with uh, also just remember if you do get those negative ones, just kind of what we learned with with uh, talking to you today, use that information and work on your customer service. You know, uh, look at things internally, um, make, you know, do what you can to, to improve and, and uh, take that, that uh criticism if you will or that negative review and, and turn it into something positive so well thomas we really appreciate you taking the time to join us today and uh, be on so thank you my friend you bet it's been fun thanks for having me uh any final thoughts dave nope and if thomas is fine um i will include a screenshot or two from his presentation at pubcon that included kind of his dashboard where he talks where he dug into some of your categories and stuff because i thought that was really cool yeah, that's opening the kimono a little bit. I didn't, you know, I like. I will. My... <laughs> I, will, <laughs> I, will I will. I will. I will. I will selectively pick stuff that does not open the kimono too much. Yeah, no, that's all right. I I put it out there in pub gun, so feel free. <laughs> I I, I want to be helpful. I want to be transparent. Awesome. So like like you said, every business has areas where they trip up. So it's it's better to acknowledge it and fix it than it is to ignore it. Perfect. Well, thank you, sir. And on that, well, for Thomas uh, with Bulwark, uh, Dave with Northside Metrics, I'm Matt with Avalanche Media. Thanks, guys, for joining us, and we will catch you on the next one of these uh, episodes. Thanks, guys. Bye. Thanks, all. Have a good one. Bye.